Welcome to The Shepherd's Pie, a slice of hope to raise faithful kids, where we focus on topics that impact young people today. I'm Antony Barone Kolink, but you can call me Tony. I'm a father of five who served in the Air Force for 21 years, and I'm now a law professor and a columnist for Practical Homeschooling Magazine. I'm also the author of The Harwood Mysteries, an exciting medieval fiction series for kids aged 10 and up. All right, this is episode one. Here on The Shepherd's Pie, we want to inform, inspire, and help you to raise happy, healthy, faithful kids, whether you're a parent, grandparent, teacher, youth leader, pastor, anyone. So in today's episode, we'll be discussing how to put our youth back into ministry by harnessing the creativity of young people today. My guests are Jennifer and Kate Waldike from Catholic Mom and Daughter, the YouTube channel. And in the review segment of the show, I'll be reviewing A.J. Catapan's middle school fiction novel, Seven Riddles to Nowhere. I started this show and I write books for young adults because it's so important that we reach our youth today where they are at. So when I considered who should be our first guest on The Shepherd's Pie, it was really an easy question. Jennifer and Kate Waldike are a mother-daughter team who run a YouTube channel together known as Catholic Mom and Daughter, where they review books and curricula. They discuss all sorts of interesting topics about the faith and we can gain a lot of insight from them about how to get our youth to a place where they can put their faith into practice in partnership with adults. And that's exactly what Jennifer and Kate do, as we'll see in our interview segment, which starts now. I'm here with Jennifer and Kate Waldike from Catholic Mom and Daughters YouTube channel and Instagram account. And just excited to have you two with us today for our very first episode of The Shepherd's Pie. So, all right, so you are a mother daughter team uh, who call yourselves YouTubers. Um, <laughs> you know, although I noticed you also are pretty active on Instagram. Um, can you uh, describe your ministry? What is this that you guys are doing? Okay, so this is um, a ministry that we hope will reach, especially Catholic teenagers and their parents, because from teaching catechism, whenever I went to YouTube or the internet, I found so many things for young kids and so many things for adults, but then the teenagers seem to fall into the gap as far as what's available for them, what videos are good, what books are good. So Anyone looking for te teenage information for Catholics, we hope they'll find our channel. So this is something that you guys started specifically similar to what I'm, I'm doing with the show here is, you know, uh, just finding ways for, for families and, and those who work with youth to impact um, our youth. Um, so, and I should probably say, Jennifer, you are the mom in the, in the group <laughs> and Kate, yes. you're the daughter yes. for anybody who's uh, listening. Tell us a little bit about yourselves. You know, uh, who is Kate? So I am a high school junior this year. I turn 17 tomorrow. Um, Happy birthday. Thank you. And I guess I'm really pretty a uh, quiet person. I don't really like to uh, go out too much, to be honest. I also really like music as well as forensic science. That's something I've been interested in for quite a while. And I think with this channel, I also have found a way to spread the faith that I never had before. So I enjoy the work. And what about you? I have a son who is a little bit older than Kate. He's 18, soon to be 19. And in my former life, I was a veterinarian before I had children. But then when Kate was young, she had a, a life-threatening illness. 
And so that really changed my whole world. And that's how we got into homeschooling to begin with, because obviously regular school Mm -hmm. wasn't an option. And so I just have never looked back. I got into teaching the Catholic faith at church and working with teenagers, teaching at homeschool co-ops and teaching has really become a big part of my life through that. So that's who I am. (laughs) All right. So you've been, Kate, you've been homeschooling since you were little? Yes, I've been homeschooled all my life. I've never known anything else. (laughs) So, but you have not been doing Catholic mom and daughter all your life. So how long have you guys uh, been doing that? So we've been going with the channel for just a little over a year now. Our one year anniversary was back on the 4th of July. So (laughs) about a year and a month, something like that. It's gone by fast. It really has. Crazy. And how did you come up with this idea, doing a YouTube channel and and specifically the the content that you're using? Well, last year with COVID closing down everything, we had gotten involved with Vacation Bible School at our church and they were doing it virtually. And they asked us to come in and record some of the sessions. And we got a lot of feedback from people telling us we worked well together on screen. (laughs) So we decided from that, that we would try starting a YouTube channel that could helpfully target, you know, Catholic teenagers and help them and their families. Yes. And also at the same time, Kate needed a year of computer credit for high school, but she's not a gamer or into coding or anything like that. So she wanted to do something that would be more real life and relevant, learning how computers work and filming and things like that. And so we decided that we would start a YouTube channel and that would fulfill her um, computer science credit for the year. And also maybe we could help spread the faith that way. All right. And I'm talking with uh, Jennifer and Kate Waldike from Catholic Mom and Daughters YouTube channel. So you guys have been doing this for a while. I saw that you uh, hit a big mark of 500 plus subscribers. What kind of reception have you had um, have you ba- gotten contacted by other, uh, you know, teens or, or families? We have. We've heard from a lot of our viewers, um, people contacting us, asking for prayers or asking our opinion on different things about homeschooling or um, what books are good to read, like your books that we lo- love to recommend and the books from the Catholic Teen Books website. We love those. What kinds of things are you reviewing and why did you pick those? Well, we love books here. So we love to do book reviews and especially trying to put information out there about the wonderful world of Catholic books that are available, especially for teenagers. It's hard for me (laughs) to realize that most people have never heard of the Catholic Teen Book website. We are not affiliated with that website at all. I was just so happy when I found it because with an avid reader at home, it was getting really hard to find quality material. Also, I have a lot of godchildren and I was always looking for books and, and good things to send them. And so that website and the authors there, including you, have fulfilled a tremendous need. So we do like to review those books on our channel. So, and I guess I should say, as you mentioned, I I am a member of CatholicTeenBooks.com, although by no means a founding member. I think I was their 14th or 15th author to join. And I think there's maybe 16 of us now. So I'm I'm sort of a Johnny come lately to that. But you're right, that's a group of people who are producing exactly the kind of uh, you know, content that you're talking about. Um, but you also review, I noticed, uh, like homeschool curriculums. and. and yeah, we do that. We Different programs that we have used. Uh, also, a lot of things that I use with my catechism classes for different feast days in the church. I have videos about, you know, how to make an edible rosary for the Blessed Mother's yeah. birthday and things like that. And also, we like to try to present some of the really cool and interesting things about the church on our channel, um, like little known apparitions of Mary or different feast days that you might not have heard of, because you'll never get bored learning about the Catholic church. There's just so much cool stuff available out there that a lot of people just don't know. Yeah, there's a whole world of stuff that I never knew until we started doing this. And I'm really excited to share with other people. It's fascinating some of the stuff you come across it, you can't make this stuff up it is so amazing so that's one thing that we really enjoy and we both have learned a lot in researching Definitely. our different youtube episodes for sure 
That's great. And, you know, uh, and this is an ecumenical show. I'm, do you ever uh, do you ever look at anything that's just either out in the secular world, like, uh, you know, a new movie that came out or or maybe a book that isn't necessarily specifically Catholic, but might be Christian in content? We do sometimes. We watched um, the movie I Am Patrick, which is about the life of St. Patrick, but it's not a Catholic production. But we watched it. We were curious. And it, it turned out to be very, very good. So, yeah, we definitely do read other books that are Christian but not Catholic. And then we do sometimes read secular books. We just had a big disaster, homeschool <laughs> disaster, reading a book that was highly recommended by a curricula company. And it was just so wrong for us on so many levels. And it just, yeah, we had to abandon it because the content was just not good. Uh, so let me move into sort of this dynamic then. Like what I'm interested, uh, you know, in a show like this is, you know, how do we get our youth, you know, more involved in the faith and spreading the faith and really, you know, coming in contact with it in the way that our kids nowadays, you know, relate to things. So maybe, Kate, let me let me throw this question to you. I mean, um, you know, can you talk a little bit about how doing this has impacted your, your own personal faith? Well, like I said earlier, this was the way to spread the faith that I never had before. And I've also learned so much, like we just talked about, of all the different feasts and the saints. And I think it has strengthened my faith a little bit. And it just helps me realize how beautiful being Catholic is. All right. And what about you, um, Jennifer? I mean, are you are you finding that doing this in some way impacts your own spiritual life? Oh, definitely. I have found out about so many different devotions, like the seven Sundays of St. Joseph. And just a couple of days ago, um, I read a post about St. Michael's Lent, which starts on the Feast of the Assumption, and it runs to the Feast of St. Michael on September 29th. This was something St. Francis started, and I had never heard of it before. So I said, what? Um, so I definitely love learning things like that. And definitely, you know, I never run out of prayers because there are so many beautiful ones out there. Is this something that you see? I mean, you're a junior in high school. Is this something you intend to continue doing, uh, you know, into the rest of your, your high school career? Or, or what are we looking at? Uh, I do plan to keep going with it. I'm not sure how going to college might affect it, but for the rest of high school, I'm definitely down. And if I can maintain it after high school, I definitely will. And what about, uh, Jennifer, you, you mentioned you have other kids in the house. I mean, do you find other things to do with them that are um, uh, you know, different projects that, that they can relate to? Well, my son is older. He's he'll soon be 19. Um, so he's so done with school But we do consult him a lot, try to bring him in with like technical issues that we're having or if we need if we need a really good uh, video. Sometimes we'll ask if he can borrow his updated iPhone. <laughs> his is newer than ours. So we do try to incorporate him that way. But he's very camera shy. He is not interested at all about being in a video. So despite our best efforts, the Catholic son is not going to appear on screen unless there's a miracle, which could happen. It could happen. It I don't happen. see it happening, but it could. Sometimes we can sneak him onto Instagram, but that's very rare. So, And I mean, you homeschool, so you already are spending a lot of time together, although I'm sure you're involved in other activities too, but especially with COVID, maybe not as much. Um, you know, uh, how is it working together so closely, especially on screen where there's a camera pointed at you? Uh, <laughs> the hardest thing is that we start laughing and we just get cut up. We just can't stop you laughing. You say sometimes. something ridiculous. I thought we just get going. Yeah, we. that's our hardest thing. Sometimes just staying focused and serious and not dissolving into giggles. That's that's a big issue. So, but then there are days that, you know, maybe I don't feel like filming or Kate doesn't. Yeah. And then we just have to try to 
encourage each other and try to just work our way through because we do have a schedule that we try to keep and and if if one of us is down and not wanting to do the work you know then that definitely affects the schedule so we try to help each other yeah that down person is usually me I will admit it he's more eager to film most of the time than I am but uh... that's your prerogative as a teenager I thought perhaps (laughs) yeah probably Is this a job at this point? I mean, do you do you feel like, oh, gosh, I got to go to work today and film my Catholic mom thing? (laughs) I I sometimes do feel like that. It sometimes feels like a job, but most of it, most of the time, it doesn't feel that way. It feels like something I want to do, but you can attest that. Yeah, sometimes there are hard days, definitely. Yeah, and sometimes I feel the pressure of like having to come up with topics that people will enjoy or they um, want to know about or that they haven't heard about a thousand times. So there are definitely, there are highs and lows for sure. And what, what kind of schedule are you on, by the way? We post twice a week on Thursday and on Sunday. And then usually filming, we try to do on Monday and Friday, which has seemed to work fairly well. But of course, things could change. Pretty aggressive schedule there. And again, I'm talking with Jennifer and Kate Waldike about their Catholic and Mom uh, ministry on YouTube. Uh, what about disagreements? Do you uh, start reviewing things and, and, and find that Mom likes something and you know, Kate doesn't or vice versa. <laughs> I don't know what to say. We do disagree on different things. Uh, usually we just have to try to push through it. And one of us will usually go to the other side just so we're not wasting time arguing about stuff. So yeah. I'm having the same issue with my kids who are helping me. My daughter, Amina, who is actually 19, has been a big assistance along with my wife on even putting together this show. And uh, I kind of feel like, you know, we've got to listen to the young folk because they are much more in tune with what's going on. Kate, do you feel like you're bringing some uh, unique perspective? And you know, what can the adults who are listening to this show take away from you as a teen on this? I think they can kind of see more of the opinion of a teen and what we like and what we don't like and just some of our views on you know, different curricula or different books and what's working for us. Um, and also can see maybe our schedules, like sometimes how busy we are or things like that and just how working around that. Are you guys seeing a generational gap in like, especially if you're talking about a curriculum or a book or something you've read where, Kate, you might be like, oh, this is so boring or this isn't working for me. And mom's like, but it's awesome. Yes. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, things that I think my kids will be really excited about, and then they're not. <laughs> We've had that, you know, that's like a knife to your heart, you know, when your kids you tell it. Some of it's boring. Yeah. I well, don't like some so. of those. So help us out then. And, and Kate, maybe I'll keep picking on you on this. Help us out. What is it that uh, you find resonates the most with people your age? I think what really hits for me is you know, curricula or books or things like that, that actually deal with the problems that teens face nowadays, because, you know, the older stuff can't hit on a lot of those things, like, you know, problems with social media or at school. So I think that's what makes the most impact on me that some of the older stuff can lack. What do you think about that, Jennifer? Yeah, I, that's, again, that's why I love the Catholic teen books so much, because they do address current topics like abortion, or, um, I don't know, different things like people who are homosexual, or um, who have left the faith, things like that. Those are definite topics that are not skirted around. It's very encouraging to read about families who have these struggles, and you know, they're turning to God and not to just whatever the media says or whatever Hollywood says. Is that what you were talking about, Kate, too, is not skirting around those kinds of issues? Yes, definitely. Approaching them with a faith-based view is very helpful when you're trying to figure out, you know, what do I do with these things? And now how do I, how do I stay true to my faith? Have you experienced any pushback on your, on your YouTube or Instagram from Uh, other teenagers or anybody who just whatever doesn't like what you're doing or they don't like the way you look or anything silly like that we haven't really had any issues on instagram but we have had the occasional comment where people don't like what we're doing in their personal opinion or just people posting 
bad links to stuff in the comment section. It's not too common, but it does happen. Do you mostly just look at uh, things that are for teenagers or do you also review things for younger kids? Um, it's a mix. It's yeah. a mix. Yeah, we try to have things for all different ages, if that makes sense. Yeah, we like to focus on the teens because there aren't so many resources out there for them. But we do like to have fun with our picture books or our crafts, things like that. Sometimes we cook, which is amazing <laughs> because I'm not a great cook, but sometimes we're in the kitchen. We just do a variety yeah, of topics. Sometimes clothing videos, yeah. So if we've got uh, either parents, grandparents, or uh, others who work with little kids, uh, what are one or two of your, your recommendations that you think they should check out? Definitely the picture books we have, especially at Christmas time, we have two videos about different uh, Catholic Christmas picture books that are really good. And then also we have a video, how to teach the Catholic faith at home. And in that we discuss different types of curricula that grandparents or parents could um, purchase and just buy use at home with their children, especially if they're not going to a Catholic school or maybe they're going to catechism, but it's just not that great and they just want something more. So we have a lot of resources available in that video. And then what about uh, Kate for uh, more of a teenage crowd? Uh, what are some of your uh, favorite recommendations you would suggest? We have done some videos on the Catholic teen books. We have those. We also have some other book recommendations about books that we've read. We also have some like school curricula videos where we talk about what has worked. I did one, I did one recently talking about what I'm using this year. Um, so, you know, maybe teens could get an idea of you know, different curricula they could use. So if they want to go and see some of your recommendations, where do they find you guys? So you can find us just on YouTube at Catholic Mom and Daughter. And then our Instagram is also the same at Catholic Mom and Daughter. Thinking about families who might have teenagers in them, what advice do you have for them? If they want to try to harness something the way you guys have harnessed it, you know, what are some good things, bad things, advice that you might give to them? Well, I would say that, you know, as far as you know, sometimes you look at families and you think their kids are so into their Catholic faith and they're so devout and they go to youth group and da, 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 da. And then, then you might look at your own family and think like, my family's not very holy, or I wish my kids would be altar servers. Or I, I would just say to those parents that every child is different and every family is different. And probably the worst thing you can do is compare yourself to another family that seems super holy because everyone has struggles and everyone has issues and comparing yourself like that is just a spiritual dead end. Not every family is going to, you know, uh, turn out the same. And, and we want a lot of things for our kids, but, you know, kids think for themselves. And, you know, I've experienced that firsthand. It's not easy. And I'm sure many people uh, who are listening to the show probably have their own struggles. So what about you, Kate? What kind of advice would you have if, uh, if there were other teenagers who heard about Catholic mom and daughter and were like, oh, that's pretty cool. I'd love to do something like that with my family. Uh, if they wanted to do something like that, I would just say you know, just try it. I would say, go for it, go for it. Try it, you know, go out there and spread your faith. There are people who want to hear from you, want to hear from another teenager. And so I think that anybody who wants to try something like this, their information could be very valuable. I have been talking with Jennifer and Kate Waldike from Catholic Mom and Daughter, uh, YouTubers and Instagrammers, I guess we'll, uh, we'll call you that then. Any parting words uh, before we sign off? Well, if you are out there and you watched our channel, we'd just like to say thank you. Uh, we hope that you have enjoyed our videos. And also, we'd like to thank you, Tony, for having us on the show today. Yes, this has been our, you. our pleasure. Thank, thank you, you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. It's been so great having you guys on the show. Thank you. All right, it's time for the entertainment review segment of the show. And you heard our guest today talk about CatholicTeenBooks.com and some of the authors on there. And I've decided to choose one of my co-authors, A.J. Catapan, and her middle school novel, Seven Riddles to Nowhere, published by Vinspire Publishing. 
You can find it on Amazon, on AJ Catapan's website, uh, and pretty much anywhere that books are sold online. I chose the book. It's a great book for, for especially, I would say, fourth to sixth graders. And I chose the book because part of our theme this week has been putting youth back into the ministry and empowering our youth to do something for their faith. And in this book, Seven Riddles to Nowhere, it's it's kind of a mystery book. It takes place in the Chicago area. And the, the protagonist, our main character, is Cameron Boyd. And he is a seventh grader who, he's not just mute, he's selectively mute, which means when he goes outside of his home, he can't speak, but he'll speak around his family and friends. So it's a really unique main character. And he goes to a Catholic school, and the Catholic school is going to close because of financial distress. And so the problem is set up where Cameron has to figure out, is there a way that he could be part of the solution? Is there something he could do to keep the school open? And it turns out that he is a potential heir to a fortune, but only if he can solve these seven riddles. And these riddles take him from one church to another all throughout the Chicago area. And Catapan has really done a nice job of showing us the different churches that Chicago has available, uh, the beauty of it, some of the landmarks that he encounters as he goes through. And she's really done a nice job with the story. Uh, Cam has uh, some friends that travel around with him. There's definitely some mystery and a lot of levity in the book. And it's just a nice book to show kids that, you know, you can get involved. You don't have to sit back and just watch the world happen around you. You can take action and do good. And that's exactly what uh, Cameron does. So again, it's a great book, especially I would say for fourth to sixth or seventh grade. It's an easy read for sure uh, for older kids, but it's enjoyable. It keeps you wondering about what's going to happen next. The characters are well-developed, and A.J. Catapin just does a nice job with the story overall. So I would recommend it. You can find uh, more about the uh, book on my website. I'll have a link to A.J. Catapin's website. And, of course, you can also go to catholicteambooks.com and look up uh, A.J. Catapin. That's all the time we have for today's show. We heard from Kate and Jennifer from Catholic Mom and Daughters YouTube channel talking about their ministry. And we heard a little bit about A.J. Catapan's middle grade fiction novel, Seven Riddles to Nowhere. Again, this is Anthony Barone Colank, and this has been The Shepherd's Pie. If any of you listening today have a question for me or a topic that you'd like me to cover on the show, please drop me a line on my website at antonycolank.com. That's A-N-T-O-N-Y-K-O-L-E-N-C.com. Also, if you visit my website, you can learn more about my historical fiction series for teens, The Hardwood Mysteries. I'll end, as always, with my wife's favorite scripture quote from Romans 8, 28. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose. May the Lord bless and keep you this week.